What's up everyone, Lexi Gavin Mather here and here I am in beautiful Northern California again ready to go play some poker and I thought why not do a video for the new aspiring poker players to give you some basic tips on how to dominate your poker games. Now I know a lot of you are probably new to the game, not very experienced, don't really know what you're doing. So if this is you then this video is for you. I am going to give you six basic tips to start crushing your poker games. And you can take it from me, I have 13 years of experience under my belt and I've been a coach for the last five years. So let's head in the office so I can show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so tip number one is pay attention to your opponents. Poker is not just a game of strategy, but it's also a game of psychology. And part of that psychology is reading your opponents. And you would be amazed how many people give off tells or information about the strength of their hand just based on their mannerisms. So some things that I look out for at the poker table are when my opponents first look at their cards, so when they are first out their cards, how they are reacting when they see their cards. Are they sitting up straight or are they slouched over? If they're slouched over, it probably means they're not interested and are probably planning on folding. If they're interested in their hand, they're gonna sit up straight. They're gonna start glancing at their chips. They're gonna start, the wheels are gonna be turning and you're gonna be able to see that if you just watch what they're doing. So one thing that I really recommend is when you're first dealt your hand, just, hold your hands over your cards and don't look at your cards until the action is on you. Instead, you should be looking at everyone else at the table and seeing how they react when they get their cards. That's also beneficial because this way your opponents aren't picking up tells on you because you know you might be the one that gives off some tells when they first see their cards. So make sure that you are just not looking at your cards first and watching your opponents and seeing how they react when they get their hands. So this brings me into tip number two, which is pay attention to your opponent's bet sizing pattern. So a lot of people will develop patterns in their play. Maybe they'll bet really, really big when they have a strong hand, or maybe they'll bet really, really small when they have a weak hand. And over time, you can start to pick up on some of those tells. So then you can come up with a strategy to exploit them. So for example, if you know that your opponent is betting really big, when he has a really strong hand, well then you should start folding out some, some weaker hands, right? You don't wanna play some like marginal hands when your opponents are probably towards the top of their range or top or towards the top of the hands uh, that they can have, right? Or on the other hand, if they're betting really small when they have a weak hand, then you can start raising them lighter or with a wider range of hands when you detect that they're weak because chances are they're just gonna have to fold if you re-raise them, right? So pay attention to your opponent's bet sizing patterns. So tip number three is manage your bankroll. So what I mean by this is it's really, really easy to go broke in poker. I've been there, I've done that. Comment below if you can relate. Going broke is not a rite of passage in poker. You don't have to go broke to be successful in this game. So I wanna give you some tips on how to manage your bankroll so that you are making sure that you're not ever at risk for losing your entire bankroll. So the general rule is you wanna have at least 30 buy-ins of any stake that you play. So what do I mean by this? Well, say you sit down at a one-two table, right? $1, $2 blinds. Now, typically I recommend buying in for at least 100 big blinds every time you play. So if you're playing one-two, 100 big blinds would be $200, right? Because two times 100 is 200. Okay, so if you can have $6,000 dedicated to your poker bankroll, then you won't ever be really be at risk for going broke. Now I know that can seem like a lot, but if you don't play very often, then you don't need that much in your bankroll. That's really if you wanna play every day. And if you're playing every day and you're trying to do this professionally, I really recommend having 50 buy-ins, but you can get away with starting at $6,000 or 30 buy-ins, okay? And just a side note, the reason I recommend for buying in with at least 100 big blinds is because the more chips you have, the more tools you can have in your arsenal. Other ways to manage your bankroll is to also set aside 
your poker bankroll in its own little cubby or bank account or whatever it is, make sure that it's separate from your life expenses and your, and your life funds because you don't ever wanna be gambling with your rent money. You don't wanna to have to sweat every decision because if you are emotionally attached to the chips, like if you know you're playing for your rent money, then you might not be able to make the best decision when you're in game. I know that if I am playing against my bankroll, then I'm more nervous, I don't play as well as I should. So make sure that you're playing a stake that you're comfortable with and separating your poker money from your life money. So tip number four is you don't wanna play too many hands. I see this mistake so much with new beginners is that they just love to play so many hands and you really don't wanna play that many hands, especially when you're just starting out. So ditch the king twos and the queen threes and the jack fives and things like that. They may seem like they're good hands, but they're actually not, especially the offsuit combinations. So try to play a tighter range. And by range, I just mean the total combinations of hands that you should be playing. You want to just kind of narrow that and tighten that up. Because if you're playing bad hands, especially in early position, you flop a pair with a hand like queen five, then you're just gonna pay off better queens a lot. So just try to avoid those hands to begin with. Try to play hands that have connectivity, you know, pseudo connectors, Broadway combos, high pairs, medium pairs, small pairs you wanna play, but only if the odds are right. Don't worry, we will talk about that in another video as well. Um, so just try to play a tighter range, especially when you're just starting out. Tip number five is be patient. So patience is a superpower in poker. It is so important. You cannot win without having patience. There is so much folding. You are going to be doing so much folding in poker that you're not gonna be able to stand it. So make sure that you stay patient. You don't wanna just wait for aces every hand because that's not a winning strategy. Like I said, you don't wanna to play too wide of a range of hands and make sure that you are practicing patience. And if you get a bad B, if you get stacked, if you run kings and aces, like just brush it off and understand that poker is a long-term game and things change quickly in poker, so try to have patience, try to just be zen and understand that there's a lot of folding involved in poker and it's not always gonna be rainbows and sunshine. You're not gonna get pairs every hand and you're not gonna get pseudo connectors every hand. You just have to be patient. And tip number six is practice, practice, practice. Like I just said, poker is a long-term game. It's all about volume. The more you play, the more you're gonna defy the variance or defy the luck factor, right? Because there is luck in poker, no matter how you slice it, you can't get around it. And the only way to kind of balance out the luck, we call it variance. The more you play, the more you're gonna balance that out. So poker, again, takes patience, takes practice. Make sure you're playing a lot. You also wanna be studying a lot. So I, in the beginning when I'm, I was just learning, I like to have a 50-50 balance of studying and playing. Uh, so try to have that balance of both. I do have a course if you want to check it out. It's in the description box below or visit LexiGavinMather.com and you can sign up there. I also would love for you to join my poker family and I'd love to work with you and coach you. Okay guys, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe, hit the bell, do all the things. Again, visit my description box below if you want to sign up for my training site. Um, it's really, really great if you are newish to poker, if you've been playing for a while, it's kind of for everyone. So go over there and check it out. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.